and he's saying, asking the secretary, who is this crazy man on the phone? Because they had fucked us around about something. And uh, of course, when you're a big company, I mean, a CFO and the board don't want to change banks because it's a lot of hassle. It's huge undertaking, but I didn't give a shit. So we did it anyway. And so she said to me, she says, oh yeah. Well, he tells that story and he taught him a lesson about customer service. And I said, well, what kind of man was, everybody thought he was an asshole. But I'm a trust fund baby because of my grandfather. I don't have to do anything, which is unfortunate. Uh, she doesn't think it's unfortunate because uh, I don't know, he left us 50 million or he left all the grandkids 50 million and uh, the, uh, but I knew her, her grandfather and he was an asshole. He was an old time Neanderthal, <coughs> Texas, guns on your hips, shoot, shoot first and ask questions later. My kind of man, actually, uh, except for I took uh, money out of the bank. It was, it was quite amusing to me. Um, the, um, but uh, did I answer your compensation questions? Any more compensation questions? And I know that normally the compensation questions are important because uh, uh, most people, by the time you do an acquisition, you have started starved to death, and you need to put some meat back on your bones. Um, I understand that. I understand that. And even though you, nobody, well, I don't know if they believe, I I, I have been uh, in that situation before in my life, not in a long time, but um, the uh, I know what it uh, feels like uh, to uh, have a uh, a final notice on your mortgage, you know. Uh, uh, you know, 60 days and they're going to foreclose and that kind of thing. I, you know, a long time ago, but I know what that feels like when I was running around trying to make things happen and uh, riding buses and uh, trains back and forth. I remember taking a train to St. Louis from Los Angeles once and it was the dead of winter and uh, I couldn't get even a, a seat and they used to allow you to sit on trains, not where you had a seat, but you could sit in the open cars. You know, and the only place that I could put my head down was the head of the train with a glass like this and it had a, a bench like this and three, it was like you could hang meat in there. And that was the only place I could put my head down and sleep for a few hours. So I remember that kind of thing. I'm glad it's in the past. But uh, the, uh, some of the kids are writing me emails. It's like I never, uh, they think that I, uh, even though I say it, they think that I was, uh, uh, born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Uh, and uh, you'll appreciate this. Only spoon I had in my mouth was a wooden spoon that you mix the guacamole with, you know, you know, or the menudo. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, but it's interesting we're getting more uh, Latinos in, the, in, in coming to the seminar. Uh, the um, legal, legal, yeah, the operative word legal. Okay, uh, the question about anything else on compensation? So for a lot of these guys, I guess everybody except the biggest guys, we're offering them in some cases more money than they've made in their careers, essentially. Well, not, not through the yeah. compensation, but through no, the... No, well, absolutely. Okay. There's no fucking doubt in wow. my military civilian line. That for the, at least three quarters of them, they have never seen this kind of money. You'll get a guy as a, uh, as a chairman that may have been the CEO or COO of a, a, a one or two billion dollar exit, but he got peanuts. I mean, he got some stock options, but he certainly didn't get the quantum of stock that he's getting from you, and, no, and absolutely not the quantum of stock that you're gonna get. And in some cases, that'll, that'll create jealousy. That'll create, and these guys that are, act like your fathers, you know, um, they turn into uh, a different kind of, yeah, I think you know the Judas. Um, but I, I'm not, most of the guys that you're going to recruit are going to be good guys, good guys and gals. And, uh, but it only takes one to make your life miserable. And it's like Lee Trevino with a lightning, you know, he doesn't go out in the rain now because he got hit like three times with lightning. Yeah. So Ben, I know you said that uh, from your experience, how do you protect uh, the board from kicking you out? Uh, no, well, I mean, one, two. Strong leadership. They're not going to kick you out if you exhibit strong leadership. They're just not. Uh, they may think about it, but they'll also think about the consequences. So they won't. 
the second way that you uh, keep your position is your perfor performance. I mean, you can talk about it and bullshit about it, but I mean, it's actually doing it. Uh, it's actually doing it. Uh, so it's through performance. And, and, and the third method is you take the precautions that I've, uh, I've coached you on the last four days vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, not forming the company till you have a transaction, um, and, um, and it'll save your position. Now, if, if, if you are willy-nilly and you don't have any leadership skills, you act like a fucking idiot and, uh, and uh, they lose confidence in you. I mean, it's very difficult, especially for the young kids. It's extremely difficult to regain that confidence. You know, some of the older guys and gals, they'll give you the benefit of the doubt where they fuck this up, but, you know. But the kids are, um, are very likely to be history. They won't give you. Now, it should be just the opposite. A young kid, he fucked it up, so we'll give him a second chance. Mm -mm. When you're talking about money, that's not the game. Okay, we're not going to let this kid fuck us up again, so we're going to get rid of him. And uh, it should be, well, he lear he'll learn from this experience. But when you're talking about shekels, you know, greenbacks, uh, people, most people are very close to their money. Not as close as a Scott, but they're very close to their money. And, um, the, um, and you can't blame them because this may be the last opportunity these board members have to make a big score. You know, I've got a, a guy doing a roll-up here in the UK. Uh, his chairman says, says, admittedly, this is my last <coughs> gasp for real financial freedom, even though he's been a senior guy. But being a senior guy for 30 or 40 years in a company, you get a nice pension. They don't even give gold watches anymore, you know? You get a nice pension, and you might have a house in Marbella or, you know, but uh, that, that and uh, $5 doesn't buy a Starbucks. And so they realize that they have an opportunity. If, 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 if the guys under the setup that uh, from Great Western from years ago, I gave everybody 2%, uh, um, except for the CFO and CEO, excuse me, uh, uh, COO. And uh, if they had kept their shares, that 2% uh, would have been 9 million bucks, just the 2%. And that's 9 million more than, you know, and it's, uh, it's, not, it's better than a poke in the eye with a chopstick. And, uh, and, even, and that was 30 years ago. So that's now, what, 15, 20 million. And so you will be stunned how when a guy or a gal thinks they're gonna get five or 10 million bucks, um, even though I coach you, that's no money. <laughs> it's no money, you two. <coughs> I coach you. For most people, that's a lot of fucking money. Considering they see what their dad and their mom has earned all their life, or they've earned to that time, and um, you know it's, uh, and so you have the leverage, in a, in a right way, not not a dishonest way or a, a disingenuous way, to create wealth for those uh, those people. Um, so one of the best case scenarios is that like that lord who is making forty five thousand pounds a year that you mentioned, right? Where well, he's got a huge title, but he's really poor. Essentially, yeah, yeah. What what's the best? What are some of the best ways to find those guys and kind of squeeze the most? We're, we're not taking it. You make it sound like we're taking advantage. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you meant to say? Yes. yes. What what I to say. Oh yeah, we're after. Yeah. What you meant to say, Adam, is how do we find people that we can assist in creating wealth? Not as much wealth as we're getting, but for them, you know. And uh, Linkfuck is uh, just about the best. Um, and trade associations, as Dr. Joe was saying. Um, and uh, but uh, LinkedIn, because remember, everybody that's on LinkedIn is there because they want some sort of part-time job or they want something. Even when they put down pro bono uh, a board position or not, excuse me, nonprofit board position. There's a difference between pro bono and nonprofit. Nonprofit means you still get paid. Pro bono means you're doing the work for free. You'll see very few pro bono things on LinkedIn. 
but you'll see a lot of nonprofits, which means, and that's the politically correct way of saying, I want more money, and so, and I'm, I'm willing to serve on a, a board nonprofit. I mean, the, but the pro bono guys are few and far between. That means they want no money. And that's not, we're not looking for those people. We're looking for the uh, nonprofits that have a resume, a CV that is good for what we need. And there's, there's, there's tons of them. I, th I told somebody in here, uh, I typed in uh, oil and gas executive, no, yeah, I think it was oil and gas executives. I got 3,100. I mean, I typed in in uh, healthcare executives. I mean, I got, you know, a few thousand. And uh, there, now, then you have to go through them and which ones are fall into your, your category. Um, but they're there. They're absolutely there. And, um, yes, sir. By the way, is that still a good industry or a sector to oil up? Which? Oil and gas? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I never thought I'd see it happen again. Yeah, well, when, oil, when I got in, no white, yellow, or green man paid more for oil assets than I did in the early 80s. I got in when oil was $41.40 a barrel, which promptly went to $6 a barrel. Six. And then it went back to 25, 30, and I was a genius, okay? Because I bought most of the biggest portion of my assets at six to 10 bucks. So I'm a genius. At $120 oil, when I said that it was going to 40 a couple years ago, and it went to 26, and it's now currently back in the high 40s, I guess, uh, I didn't think I'd see that again. I just never did. Uh, but n never underestimate how long you can be. So there are rigs in the North Sea. Let's talk about the North Sea because we're here. There was rigs in the North Sea. There's countless investment credits that are underwater, pun intended, that they borrowed money to drill when oil was 80, 90, 100, and now it's 50, that there's no fucking way that they can be servicing their debt. There's, uh, there's none, zero. That's why the massive layoffs in Aberdeen that have stretched down to here. I told you we put an ad, we put a, a ad in for uh, an administrative assistant here, and, and uh, 36 hours later, we had 300 people. We had P uh, PhD engineers, uh, you know, uh, and I, we had just tons of people apply because, you know, they got to put food on their uh, table, you know. And, um, but, you know, and then we put in an ad for uh, housekeepers, I mean, uh, and we had, again, 200 plus. Again, same PhD engineers. Uh, the um, <laughs> and so, you know, I, I admire them that they're willing to do anything, but the PhD uh, engineer, um, chemical engineer, isn't going to help us much with um, you know uh, cleaning the toilets. Well, maybe he would, a chemical engineer, <laughs> you know. But uh, anything? Other questions? Okay, YouTube. Thank you. We'll talk to you tomorrow.